Hello, hello, and welcome, Christmas cousins, or should I say, ho, 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 I'm Cousin Chad. And I'm Cousin Seth. And today, we have a very special guest. Now, I've said that before, but this time, I really mean it. We have Bran from Deck the Hallmark Christmas Podcasting Royalty, the inimitable Brandon Gray from Deck the Hallmark and Christmas Morning, two shows of which I'm a huge fan. Now, Bran is a seasoned Christmas and Hallmark expert. He's an enthusiast. So we're going to dive deep into all things Christmas with him today, specifically how to keep that Christmas spirit year round, which is difficult, especially right now. We're in May. We haven't even touched summer yet. So, But first, we're going to kind of delve into a quick recap of Brand's story, his journey, and, and get to know him more, although I know many of us know the story. And we'll kind of then review with Brand a little bit about our journey on our podcast so he can you know give us his reactions and thoughts on it, and then he'll give us his top-notch tips. So it is May. Let's gather around the fire pit. It wouldn't be a fire right now, Seth. It'd be Mm -hmm. a fire pit. And let's go. So uh, Bran, I know you don't always do it in front of a live studio audience. Of course, you could see we have hundreds of people in the audience here today. Oh my gosh. It's amazing. So welcome, Bran, to the Christmas Cousins. This is amazing. Thank you. I am. I'm overjoyed. Um, Did I invite myself on this show? Maybe, but uh, I'm just happy to be here. You did, and, and the envelope with cash helped. That was the yeah. payola that we needed to get you on, and 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 thank you for that. The, yeah, and again, that. we won't say how many thousands of dollars it was, but multiple, multiple. multiple that, yeah. Right? Yes, we could safely say that. We have yeah. a couple nice new suits for the weekend, and things are <laughs> yeah. looking good. So, thank you. You're welcome. Absolutely. Now, normally, we uh, we do this virtually, where Seth is in one location, Chicago. I'm in North Carolina now. He's in town visiting for our big family event, so we're here doing it live together. You're in South Carolina. We're so close. We could have done it in person, but Bran, I've been a fan of yours and your shows for a long time now. I actually um, started. I listened, watched a couple Hallmark movies. And then I found you guys somehow. And then I only started watching more Hallmark movies because I'd like to see what you said about them. Oh. Uh, so it was interesting. Yeah. So sometimes I would listen and then go watch. And then I ended up getting a book. So I've been listening. Then I've I've heard uh, Christmas Morning. We've had Scott on here, your co-host on the Christmas yes. Morning podcast several times. He was fantastic. He's a, a music expert on there. Uh, but we haven't gotten you yet. So I have. You were like our white whale, our Moby Dick. Wow. Brand. So here we are. Yes. I, hope, I hope I don't disappoint. I mean, I'm a, I'm an, uh, an easy date here, so uh, That's right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry it wasn't as exciting of a catch as no. uh, you know. Shoot, shoot higher. Go go for like uh, I don't know Santa. Maybe you can right. Santa. well, we're working on it. We're, yeah. we're we're getting. We're hoping you had a contact. He's, uh, I do. He comes on every Christmas Eve on Christmas morning. Which I heard is a confusing sentence to say, uh, but he's tough, man. He like. You know, if it's not if it's not like Christmas Eve, he has a hard time getting on the phone. So yeah, uh, we're right. lucky, but I think yeah. you'll get there. Okay, yeah, we want to get him. You know, when it's a good time, he's not busy. When he's sober, you know, that's not yeah, always right. easy either. So well, and that good. isn't always the case on Christmas Eve either. So uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> but no, it's not. Hope for the best. So, Brand, tell me. I, I just want to get into a little bit because because Seth and I were talking. It's fascinating. Do you? You were a teacher for a while. I was a and, teacher for a while, yeah. And, and then you started this podcast. And then all of a sudden, you you segued into other shows and a whole kind of podcast network. You have a lot of stars on. I mean, you must wake up every morning and just thrilled that you get to do what you love about a subject you love. I mean, and now you've been doing it for years to make a full career out of it. That's an enviable thing that so many people want. And you've achieved that. Yeah, I yes, I do. It's the best. Uh, I'm not going to lie. And people, you know, uh, sometimes ask, like, how do you watch so many movies and do so many podcasts? And I say, it's very easy. Uh, like, this is not hard work. It is right. uh, so much fun. The fact that I get to watch movies for my job and talk about Christmas for my job. There's nothing about the aspect of recording and watching and stuff that is it's hard. It's the best. It's the it's the best job. And I am going to, uh, you know, do it until people stop listening, which is hopefully forever, because it's just it's I couldn't ask for a better job. It's the best. Right. Well, I think Seth appearing here with our 23 million daily listeners mm-hmm. is definitely going to help prolong that career. Yeah. And I think Christmas in itself is going to be around for a while. So. <laughs> That's right. yeah. I, I've, I've, I'm yeah, I'm really that. banking on that. And the movie, like, you know, the movies themselves, the Hallmark movies, it seems like every year there's more, not just on Hallmark, but Lifetime and all these other different thousands of streaming services out there. So as long as they're making movies, we'll keep doing like the Hallmark. And if they ever stop, we'll, we'll figure it out. Like I, I don't right. I, we're trying to, 
try, we're always trying to evolve and, and do different stuff like Christmas morning and stuff like that and find ways for us to continue to do things uh, outside of just talking about made for TV movies. So uh, yeah, it's, it's the best. Well, you, and that's not something that's going away. I mean, Christmas movies are now as ensconced and as part of the Christmas zeitgeist as the music is and the food is. It's it's what people do to celebrate. They watch the movie. So you've captured that perfectly and it's only growing. And yeah, and, and it really sounds like we've, we had a similar uh, story where it's just you, you kind of stumble upon these movies. I stumbled upon them uh, like a 2014-ish. And when I found out that there was a channel that 24-7 around the holiday seasons playing Christmas movies, they could have been really any, any sort of quality. And I would have been in, I didn't like just the fact that it's visually Christmas on my screen. I'm happy. And luckily I also am a sucker for uh, a cheesy movie. And so it all kind of worked together for it to be this obsession that I, I began to have um in 2014 2015 and so it sounds like we had a similar uh, uh story there kind of stumbling upon them and being like i just want all of these now oh yeah well i, I first started watching going i'm gonna watch this and just just you know kind of tear it apart and have fun with it right and about a quarter of the way and i was so fully invested in the story of whether or not they've saved this poinsettia farm <laughs> that i was like oh my gosh i'm actually enjoying this in a non-ironic way what is going on with me and the worst is when you you get to the end of one if you're watching live and then the next one starts right up and you're like, well, I'll just I'll give it just a couple minutes and see. Right. How it, and the next thing you know, you're three deep and it's midnight and you got to you know, figure out what you're going to do the next day. Right. And with your life at that. Point. Yes, yeah. of course. So, and now, Seth, you've had that journey because I introduced you to them just yeah. about a year ago or not even. Right. Yeah. It's been less than that. It's uh. Yeah, it's interesting because I had seen Hallmark movies before um, over the years, and I wasn't real familiar with the Christmas world of movies and stuff. So getting into that was uh, was interesting. But I can see what you're saying. You go into it kind of like you can joke on it and stuff, and um, you get into it and you get really invested in the storylines. And I was just like, oh, okay. And then <laughs> it started falling up. And then, um, yeah, I would... Uh, then they come spiraling out of control, more movies. <laughs> and, more more movies. Sudden, you're watching and, just, and then they use yeah. the same people and you have your favorites and uh, you get excited when you see the Andrew Walker movie of the year or whatever. So they know right. what they're doing over there. They've got yeah. a, they got it all figured out for sure. And you've become friends with a lot of these people now, actually out of the show friends as well, right? We text. Yeah. Them. Yeah. I it's, you know, I think we're in an interesting the fact that we are uh, guys is interesting. And it was kind of the, when we started the show, it was kind of the hook there. It's like these guys, one of them loves them. One of them is in the middle and one of them despises them. And it was kind of the hook for the whole show is the fact that we're guys. And I, I can't be the only guy, obviously, that loves these movies. And Dan is clearly not the only guy that thinks these movies are trash. And right. so I think there was something uh, freeing about that for a lot of the uh, male actors, especially on the network that they were like, OK, this is like I, I was maybe like a little bit of embarrassed like that this is where my career was and now right. uh the movies are so popular and i kind of have this these guys that are talking about these movies that i can kind of feel a little bit more comfortable with and so yeah a lot of uh, really cool friendships and, and relationships have come out of the show uh which is just a, a huge added bonus for sure it's a great point because you unwittingly almost made it more uh you know more normalized for men watching these movies too. Cause my wife doesn't even watch them. I watch them by myself. Yeah, my wife I, doesn't either. Oh really? Oh, they yeah. should hang out. We should go watch one. Yeah. So, we'll, we'll, we'll hang out. They'll hang out and we'll both, we'll all have a great night. Right. Right. Exactly. So, okay. So she doesn't watch them at all. So you watch them largely by yourself or you watch them with the, your co-hosts. Yeah. So when, before the show started, I would watch them at night um, as she was like falling asleep, I would watch them. And that was kind of my way to get them in. And then uh, when we were lucky enough to be able to do it full time, now I just basically watch them for the most part in the office. Uh, so right. we'll come in on, on Monday mornings and during the holiday season, at least we'll watch, you know, the, the two or three movies that premiered that weekend and record episodes and whatnot. And so I don't, I, you know, I still watch them at home uh, occasionally um, at nighttime, but not as much because I get to watch them. I'm lucky enough to get to watch them during the day. So. And what do you do? Because that was your one of your passions. So when your avocation becomes your vocation, when you know when what you love becomes your job, 
when you're like, I want to take a break and kick back. You used to go, I worked all day. I'd take a break and quick back, kick back and watch a Christmas movie. Do you still watch them and go, I'm going to watch this one just without commenting, without thinking, without taking notes? Is that? Yeah. Cool? Yeah, yeah, I do. So uh, during the holiday season, when there's, there's, you know, a few that I really love, I will, uh, you know, go back and watch them at nighttime where I can just kind of enjoy Cause I, I'm the one that has to take uh, notes for the synopsis. And so, I'm very like I'm watching it differently there than I am when I'm just hanging out at home. So it's nice to be able to have the few that I, I want to go back and watch uh, just by myself, just for funsies. And so like built more Christmas this past year, I probably watched, you know, three times uh, outside oh, yeah. of just the office. And so, but then there's also, my wife does love Christmas and she loves like real Christmas movies. And so we have, you know, obviously our list of favorites that we'll work through during the holiday season. And then I'll throw on a, a Hallmark movie here or there um, that I want to rewatch. Right. Okay. So, so that's part of, that's been part of your Christmas tradition for a long time. And then of course you started the podcast and that kind of blew up and all of a sudden it was like year round Christmas for you and, and, and the Hallmark world. Cause I know you cover more than just Christmas. Um, and for me, I watch, I listen nonstop to your show during the holiday season. And I'll check in and out in the off season because I don't watch Hallmark otherwise, but I know you still do great interviews. And, uh, and and it's really cool the connection you do have with the people and your fans. He has fans. They're called the Double Deckers. Okay. So they've got a whole community going. They have Bramble Fest coming up. Yeah, right? Bramble so Fest is well. coming up in July. Yeah, it's a weekend here in Greenville, South Carolina. You should come down. Uh, yeah, when is That'll it? What awesome. weekend? Uh, it's uh, the th Third, I think it's like the 19th and 20th, I believe. Oh, like very cool. Okay. I may have to take the Christmas Cousins jet. That would be <laughs> like an easy that. flight. Well, yeah. Okay. I, I, that, I'm, and who do you have this year? Any big uh, guests? Or So we don't announce the uh, guests that we bring in simply because – we did it the first year and mm -hmm. it uh, names changed because of, right. of uh, they'll get a, a call to go and do an actual gig, like an acting job. And so we just kind of keep it close to the vest, but we bring in all of our, uh, we have lots of other shows on the network and different people that help out with deck the homework. So we bring in all of those co-hosts uh, right. to, for the weekend. And then we typically bring in one or two uh, actors for, for the weekend as well. Right. That makes sense. So they're not disappointed then. Okay. Right. You yeah, can't yeah. be like, right. Okay. If you announce Tyler Hines is coming, you, he's got to be there because right. you'll have a thousand people show up for yeah, it. Yeah. 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 So we just say come for the fun and, and anything else is a, is a bonus. Right. Okay. So that's July 20th. You said that weekend, 19th and 20th. I should know it off the top of my head, which I don't. It is uh, July 19th and 20th. Yeah. In Greenville, South Carolina. Beautiful. That's right. Okay. So what is it? You guys rent out a, like a banquet room or something at a hotel? Yeah. So and... we're at a, we're at a hotel. We got this uh, conference room and we record just a bunch of podcasts live. So some deck the hallmark. We do a live Christmas morning. Uh, we have a, a courtroom show called Yo Gavel Gavel. We talk about uh, where we talk about courtroom shows on TV and all sorts of different shows that we do throughout the weekend. Um, do karaoke and just basically party with the people that help support us all year. So it's kind of like a awesome. it's become a bit of a, a family uh, a family reunion of sorts because uh, you get to know the people and they come every year and stuff like that. Yeah. Now with social media, you can keep in touch with them, you know, all yeah. year round too. So Brian, let me ask you, what do you know? Is there any awareness at all of the Christmas Cousins podcast? Because I want to run our journey through you and get your reaction here. So I I have listened to your show before. I don't know your backstory. Uh, we were talking beforehand. I asked you why you are having a family gathering. Yes. And uh, one, I was shocked that it's not Christmas related at all. Um, <laughs> but uh I was also, you tell your story because uh, okay. now I'm, now I'm intrigued. Sure. So I grew Seth and I grew up and we didn't celebrate Christmas and I married into a family that was huge with Christmas. We've been married now, my wife and I, over 20 years. Uh, we met, actually we were in the fourth grade. We were young. We, uh, so we've been married for a long time and her family's way into Christmas. It got me into it like full on hardcore. Like, I can't believe I've been missing this my whole life. And they laugh at how much I was into it. It's almost similar to you, Brand. Not that level, but similar would be like, hey, it's July. Let's bake Christmas cookies. And they're like, Chad, this is insane. Stop. So I was doing it. And then my dear cousin, Seth, 
I uh, found out he wasn't doing any of the seasonal fun. In the fall, he wasn't getting pumpkin spice drinks. In the in Christmas, he would walk in and just get a regular black coffee. I'm like, you are whoa, missing whoa, out this whoa, whoa. That has nothing to do with what you celebrate, bud. Like, that's just joy. That's exactly. If you're not getting a pumpkin spice, I don't know yeah. what you're doing. Right. It's typical of my life. Not a lot of joy, just kind of <laughs> going through it, <laughs> being la- mainstreaming it. <laughs> Tell tell Brand what you have for breakfast every day. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is how much joy he wakes up and has. Yeah, the, um, a piece of dry rye bread. Well, they'll <laughs> toast it to give it a little. Oh, he toasted. <laughs> wow, wild, man, Seth. that's yeah, amazing. Wild. So I said to him, I said, Seth, we've got to take this journey. Uh, now I work as a um, as a broadcaster of, of sorts on camera uh, for my regular job, and um, so I I said I want to do a podcast with you and take you on this journey to show you the seasons, show you the Christmas magic, and see how you do. You may hate it, you may be apathetic towards it, or you might love it. So we started off with our first episode was a preview, and then we rolled into his first ever Hallmark movie that he really watched, not like half slept through, which is Picture Perfect Christmas. And it's fun, Brandon. It's like raising a child and seeing Christmas through their eyes for the first time. He had never seen It's a Wonderful Life or Tasted Eggnog, and we did it all live on air. And I love that. It's That's really cool. Fun. And, now, and really, we ended up, yeah, go on. No, no, sorry, go ahead. No, as you say, we ended up where people got into the journey. They really got into it little by little. It was kind of catching on and we got the listenership going up and up and up. And all of a sudden we were in all 50 states and 50 something countries and just people even messaging all the time, really getting into his journey. Oh, has Seth tried this? Seth has to try that. Have you done this? Uh, so they that was part of it that we're like oh there's something here we're having a lot of fun let's keep going with that and 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 that's where we are now 127 episodes in growing up uh i imagine you all celebrated hanukkah yes was it frustrating like when you would see all the christmas around like now hallmark is like hey hanukkah does exist we'll do one movie uh right. a, a season D- does it does it feel growing up that like hanukkah is like the afterthought that nobody cares about or were you frustrated with christmas a little i, I felt yeah we had eight days and it still didn't match one right. big day it was like eight <laughs> games not comparing to the super bowl but uh, what we did, and Seth, I know you guys did as well. We always went away, so we'd be in the Caribbean, so we'd miss a lot. A lot of, we wouldn't miss it so much. Yeah. But uh, yes, yeah, certainly, when you're doing all the school events and you're making all the things, that it doesn't connect necessarily with what you're doing. And we, you know, we didn't. It wasn't like a super religious household we grew up in, and it was a town where it had all different types of everybody. Yeah. So it wasn't that big of a deal. We did celebrate Christmas with friends and their families and things, but not in the house and decorate. And my wife did. And when I saw that and went to her house one night for the Feast of the Seven Fishes, they're an Italian mm-hmm. family, on Christmas Eve, and I was like, oh, this is mind-blowing. It's like never-ending <laughs> snow crab legs. I felt like we were in a red lobster. It was beautiful. And so uh, is yeah. it the food? Is it the food of Christmas that you kind of fell in love with? Is that what pulled you in? No, for me, it was almost the escapism, that that bubble mm. that you're in when it's Christmas time. It's like a, an alternate universe that coexists with the world. And it was like with the Hallmark movies, you feel like you're ensconced in a snow globe for a couple right. of hours. Same thing. And it was like, oh, today's a random Tuesday. But no, it's a Tuesday in December. That means I'm having peppermint in my drink. That means I'm putting on this music. So it made every day an elevated experience above the ordinary. And that's what got it for me. And that's where... I wanted to share it with Seth and everybody. And that's where we've kind of had this Christmas Cousins community of sorts where other people are going, oh, that was so fun. I just was randomly listening to you guys do all the pumpkin things at at Trader Joe's. You know, we do taste reviews with that or we do Starbucks versus Dunkin' and, and, um, and try all these traditions. And I get to share it with Seth and go, Seth, you've got to try this. You've got to do that. So it's been a wild journey and it's been a lot of fun. So, I love that. And I you've been a that. part of it, Brand, whether you've known it or not, because I tell Seth, you've got to listen to this guy's shows. I've listened to every episode of Christmas Morning. Everyone. Thank you. So, I have as well. <laughs> yes, you have. Yeah. I've probably heard it more closely because you were talking. So, yeah, well, what's funny is, you know, when we started like the Hallmark, it was initially just Christmas movies. Uh, you know, the whole idea was we're going to watch all, I think the first year in 2018, it was 37 new Hallmark Christmas movies. Mm. And we get to January and we're like, well, what are, like, what do we do now? Like, right. we didn't really have a plan for it. So we just kind of were like, well, they do movie. Like, I had never really watched a non-Hallmark Christmas movie. Like, my 
my hallmark was it's Christmas, that's it. And then January comes around and I watch anything else. And so yeah. that was new to me as well when we went into January. But, you know, I, it's still, it's like selfishly, I just wanted it to be a Christmas show. Like I just love Christmas so much. Right. And so that's part of what Christmas morning uh, was born out of was this desire to, to keep doing Christmas all year. And we do it now on deck the homework too. Like every Monday we do a Christmas movie and I, I find ways to uh, inject everything I do with some sort of Christmas all year. Uh, but that's why we did Christmas morning. And Scott was uh, so, so helpful in getting all of that going. Cause he was doing another show as well. So it all kind of made sense and it was just selfishly. I just wanted to keep celebrating Christmas all, all year. So it all right. worked out. And so that's on Mondays you do with Alonzo Duraldi, who's been yes. on our show as well. Yes. Uh, and he's um, he's fantastic. I mean, he's such a great guest. Now, what he did, which is really cool, he gave Seth uh, his his like top five must-see Christmas classic movies. Seth then took his homework and watched them all. Yeah. And we came back and had Alonzo on and did a review of, of them because you saw them for the first time. Yeah, these are like them. the classics, like Miracle on 34th Street, yeah. uh, The Shop Next Door, um, uh, it's a wonderful life. So yeah. that was fun. Well, I actually did that. a similar thing with Alonzo because my I grew up in a house that just we didn't watch old movies like black and white just wasn't a thing we did. And so like I grew up watching Jingle All the Way and the right. new Miracle on 34th Street and like things like that. That was my Christmas. And so uh, I think it was two years ago now. Alonzo was like, I'm going to make you sit down and and watch some of these classics. So I went to a similar uh, school of Alonzo and okay. yes. came out the other end with uh, a lot of joy and a lot of respect and you and a lot of like being able to be like, oh, what they're doing here in this Hallmark movie, it's a nod to, you know, this movie or whatever. So that was a big thing. Like all those references to those movies throughout your, your life and you hear yeah. and you have no idea kind of what they're from. It's like, Oh, that's what it was. And it was just like yeah. watching it. It's like, everything's occurring to me. I'm like, Oh yeah. So yeah that and that's what all the Simpsons references right. were. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. and there, but there's nothing still like I, I didn't see uh, it's a wonderful life until uh, I was an adult. And watching it for the first time, being like, what is like this movie's like sad? Why does everyone love it? And then you get to the end of it and you're like, ah, that's why everyone loves it. Like right, that's right. the probably it was probably the greatest ending of a of a Christmas movie for sure, but maybe of of cinema ever. Like it's just so beautiful and wonderful, and it gives you every possible feel you could imagine. So uh yeah, yeah, it's, they, yeah. It's right it's up so there good. with Picture of Perfect Christmas on Hallmark. Right up there. That's, That's a cinematic right. Cinematic classic. The, Absolutely. Yeah, you. That was what you did was a uh, Twenty Five Weeks of Christmas with Alonzo. Yeah. That's and right. It was great because one week Brand would pick a classic from nineteen ninety. Okay. And then Alonzo would pick a classic from nineteen forty eight. Right. And uh, it was a lot of fun. I, I enjoyed that series, and maybe you guys will continue it because that was a. There's got to be other old ones out there to watch. We actually. Uh, so on Mondays. We've been watching Christmas movies from 2023 that we didn't get to from all these different streaming services. Uh, but starting in July, I believe we will be doing a little bit more of what you're talking about with going back in the old time machine. So, oh, uh, wow. you hear that, long. everybody? That's big news right now. I, yeah. Is this the exclusive? <laughs> yeah, this is great. I, the news wires are already picking it up. I already see. Uh, oh, CNN is reporting it right now. Brand That's huge. Else. Wow, news huge. Yeah, look at the BBC has a special coming up tonight. This is this is fast moving news. Brand, you're a, a journalist. Movie. You're a good journalist. You got it out of me. I don't know how you did it. I uh, was <laughs> right. not allowed to discuss it, and it just came out. So That's uh, right. That's amazing. So. Uh, so anyway, so with our journey, Brand, it's been we we did also after Christmas. We said, well, we want to keep going with Christmas, and we've been doing interspersing it, where we've been doing uh, today's episode drop, and we had uh, Bob from the Festive Foreign Film Fans, another Christmas mm -hmm. podcast. He also is a, a fan of yours. That's cousin Bob. Says hello, and hello, Joe, the Bob. Christmas aficionado. We all brought the weirdest beers we could find because we said, you know what? It's May. The weather's getting warmer. The days are longer. Let's just get weird. Drink some weird beers and see what happens. And that's a, a very fun episode, not Christmas related. And then we bring it back kind of with you and talk some Christmas and try to intersperse the two. Um, and one of the things, though, I, I do, if you get to listen to more of our podcast, we did um, an original, The Christmas Cousins, uh, Christmas Carol, which yeah. is our take on the Dickens classic, which yeah. we wrote. And uh, 
It was fantastic. It was our first scripted piece, right, Seth? Yeah, yeah it was a lot of fun. <laughs> and and a lot of other ones. But we do have you here because you are going to talk to us. This is a problem we face. Now, before, this is interesting, Brand, you'll love this. So Seth was not into Christmas. But then we did this journey and he got way into it. And he said to me, Chad, in November, oh my gosh, I'm starting to feel like, what do I do after Christmas is over? Yeah. That's the universal question where it's just like, oh, no. I don't that's think that's right. a neurosis that just lives in me. I think that was a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we had talked about a lot, even going so far to uh, have a uh, support group for people, you know, on the, a, a couple days after Christmas. But It's a um, real thing, man. The Christmas blues are uh, are real. Like once Christmas passed, that week after Christmas, woof, it's tough. It's yeah. tough. Do you feel that now or you don't because you know you have things going year round? I still feel it. Like, uh, you know, I have two kids, a, a six and four year old uh, boys and Christmas with them is amazing. And it's just, you know, made me fall in love with the season all over again. And so I think you get to Christmas Eve and you wake up Christmas morning and this is just how I am. I wake up Christmas morning, they open presents and then I immediately get a little sad and I'm mm. like, Oh man, this is, we did the thing. We've, it's all been building up and we did the thing. And now right. it's like, Oh man. Um, I do of course take joy in knowing that I, I get to talk about Christmas and listen to Christmas music and all that stuff all year. Um, but there's still a part of me that's just like, there's something about the buildup of November and December Mm -hmm. That is no matter how hard you try throughout the year, you can't quite replicate the magic of the season. Um, you can try and I have some tips, but it's all going to lead up to November and December. And you're going to be like, yes, this is amazing. And then it, it gets to the 26th and 27th and you're like, womp, womp. So uh, right, yeah, right. it's real. It's real. It is different, right? Well, you can walk into any store in the country and it is fully decorated. You're immersed with the music and everything. You can't replicate that. Even if you're at home watching a movie, when you go to Target and it's just, you're like, why is there a red, white, and blue flag here? Right. I don't care about July 4th. I want to get going into, into the season. So yeah. that makes sense. It's okay. always fun though when you find, I've, I've found that you find little things throughout. It's, um, so I am Mrs. X. Uh, I don't know if you've heard about I'm my girlfriend or- well, uh, through the show, Seth has uh, found a new love interest. So we've been following wow. that as an unexpected journey. <laughs> Hold it's on. Like, it's oh, a, a listener? Uh, no. no. <laughs> that would be great, though. <laughs> we had a dating game. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> So, um, but no, like her and I went out of town, we went to uh, South Haven, Michigan, and uh, we walked into uh, an antique or resale store and they had a whole display of like Christmas ornaments and stuff. And it was just like seeing that I, my face lit up and I was just like, oh, it was cool to find something like that. Cause you know, it was, it was like uh, a couple of months ago or something like that. So it's obviously out of season and stuff, but. Um, and he was sending me pictures like in April of Christmas ornaments. I go, wow, right. this is really working. This I literally, I have on my list guys, just go to a thrift store. You can go oh, to a thrift store or an antique store or whatever. And without fail, there is some sort of Christmas section. And it's like the weirdest, most wonderful stuff that you can find. Uh, and, and without fail, every thrift store I go in, I try to find the little shelf. Some, some stores have more than others, but without fail, you can find random weird Christmas stuff at I these thrift that. stores and, and antique stores. So, well, that's, uh, that's, that's tip number one. So let's, tip let's number one, it, right? Yeah. You did it. All been waiting for. You, you segue perfectly Seth. the moment <laughs> we've been waiting for. So tip number one on keeping Christmas year round from brand himself who's Christmas royalty at this you're part. Right, absolutely. Um, so it's to go to a thrift store and you're absolutely right. There's actually one by my house that has a fantastic uh, selection. And brand, what I find when you do go to those thrift stores, they have a history, you know, they're not yeah. this lifeless thing because you know, they've right. gone somewhere, you know, they've probably been in the hands of someone who's deceased, which yes. is kind of strange, mm -hmm. but uh, it's, you don't know what type of ghost you're bringing into your house. <laughs> you right. really don't. No. That's why you go to estate sales for that stuff. That's right. That's, <laughs> That's exactly right. Right. That's right. I mean, my personal favorite, and we talked about it a little bit on Christmas morning, but uh, if I can find a really cool, classic retro Christmas mug, mm. forget about it. Like that's uh, tip number two is is coffee, and I'll get to it in a second. Okay. But there's something great about finding a a, 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 a Christmas mug you've never seen before, right. and it's just great. And 
you know, you got to be careful because you'll become like me and you'll have shelves and shelves and shelves of mugs. And you got to, at some point, you'll have to go through your mugs and get rid of some. And that's hard. Uh, but uh, I love a Christmas mug. And so you could always find some of those at the thrift, thrift stores as well. And it's just. And they have the added bonus that they may have lead or mercury in them, which which really adds a nice flavor and effect. That's exactly from right. Yeah. I've always said if Christmas isn't killing you, something else is. And so <laughs> right. you right. might as well just let it happen. That's right. Better to die from Christmas than something less fun. <laughs> That's right. exactly right. right. That would make a good exactly. story. <laughs> Fran, you really take make lemonade out of lemons. I love it. <laughs> I try to. Yes. But it brings me to number two, which is, two. Which is coffee. Okay. Um, I am drinking right now peppermint flavored coffee now it's not like i drink my coffee black um because i'm an american and uh so i actually for the longest time didn't really do uh flavored coffee i thought that it was a weird thing like i'd see these bags of of coffee at the store and i'd be like i don't know i just want coffee but um uh, we've recently over the past uh, holiday season uh, our uh, producer aaron would bring in different flavored coffee. And I was like, this is wonderful. So we have this pet, like just, it's just a hint of peppermint. It still tastes like coffee, but it's just a hint of peppermint. Yes. It gives you that little bit of Christmas bonus points. If you're drinking it out of a Christmas mug, which I'm not right now, but uh, you, you, you just, it's just that little bit. It's just that little thing that can make you go, ah, oh, yes. Christmas. I like nice. that. Kind of connects the synapses with the memories, right? So you just get that that taste of it. Yeah. Oh, okay. And I'm there are it. like there's Christmas creamer, like there's peppermint mocha creamer and all this different stuff that you can add to your coffees, which I just don't do. Um, even though I do love going to a coffee shop and getting a peppermint mocha, I don't like the just the flavored creamers. It doesn't. I don't know. It tastes it's artificial. Just, it, yeah. It tastes it's just artificial. a little bit of the peppermint syrup or extract. You're saying. No, so this is literally the bag. It just it oh, comes oh. it comes flavored right. with a little hint of peppermint, and so oh, okay. it just uh, and you can find them during the holiday season. Stock up on them, and then whenever you need a little Christmas boost, like you know May 9th, throw right. it in your coffee maker, and there you go. So Christmas flavored that. coffee. Okay. See that Seth? It's way better because Seth puts two shots of vodka in his morning coffee. <laughs> right. That's not going to get you the Christmas vibes. <laughs> okay, some well, vibes. <laughs> I'll yeah. just say I'll say if you want to if you want to spice things up. Yes, uh, we do. Get a like uh, I love uh, down here. We have something called Carolina cream, but it's basically just like Bailey's. Right. And there is something about Bailey's and like that creaminess uh, of like a creamy liqueur. That can make things a little bit Christmassy as well. If you just okay. want to just spice things up a little bit, just a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Okay. okay. I like that. So I hear creamy thing. I'm <laughs> starting to check out. <laughs> no, man, it's good. It's good. I promise. Have you had Bailey's before? Um, I'm sure I have, but it's not a regular drink that I would go for. So, so, so I'll, yeah, go on. I'll do like a, like an old fashioned and then throw some of this in there and it just like sweetens it up a little bit. Okay. And it uh, gives you just a little bit of a little something. A little I something. like that. Yeah, it's kind of like a, a colder weather drink, too. So it gives yeah. that feeling. Now, Seth on air did his first ever eggnog. He almost threw up live on air, which is fantastic for ratings or through the roof. It was. Sweet, I sweet also there. don't like eggnog. So really? I know okay. I'm in the I'm in the minority there. There's something it it, it I should like it. I yes. it has all the makings of things that I like. I just have i'm i'm weird with food and drinks and i have a hard time getting over the fact that there's egg in it like it just seems like something there shouldn't be and so yeah. even though i might like the taste of it there's a mental hurdle in my mind that i can't get over um i tried it again last holiday season i was like i should like this but i can't i can't like it and so I know I'm in the minority there of Christmas lovers. Is this something your family didn't have around? We didn't up have here? it. No, uh, no. Because you were no, in no. Florida, and and eggnog would get pretty rancid pretty fast. I it guess, would. Yeah, it didn't it? Didn't it? Wouldn't stick around for very long. But you know, I can do a hot chocolate any day of the week. Really? Okay. Love but that. just not eggnog. Interesting. Have you tried like homemade versions or anything? Because you do seem like the target market. You, I know. Eggnog. I need to just keep doing it. I just, I, it's so, it's, it's like black coffee. Like I woke, uh, you know, a few years ago, I was like, I just want to start drinking my coffee black. It's yeah. one of those things you just have to do for a little while, and then, you know, you get, you get used to it. So maybe this holiday season, I will force myself to like eggnog. <laughs> 
These are lofty goals. I like it. All right. See, that's a whole journey. You can do yes, that. It is a I journey. Love I love a good drive. I'm just trying to better myself. We're all just trying to be a little bit better, you know? Each day, a little better, Each a little more accepting day. of eggnog. And yes, humanity. a little bit yes. more accepting and inclusive of eggnog. Of eggnog, yes. Of eggnog. And humanity, if we have time have left you, over. If, but yes, eggnog. of course. We're all just trying. Exactly. Um, I have a few more. Are you ready? Okay, let's roll. Brian, yeah. I do have one other question, though. Yes. Quick aside, what about Cadbury cream eggs? How are you with those? Because <laughs> Seth did that on air and almost threw up, too. Don't like it. I don't, don't like, like, like it. it. I don't okay. like biting something and having something <laughs> shoot into my mouth. <laughs> which... Sounds like something you should probably cut out, but yes. I, it's just, like, I don't like gushers. I don't like cream filled donuts. Mm. I just don't like that texture of, of stuff. I hear I'm right okay. there with you. Yeah. <laughs> no Twinkies, no ho ho. No, get out of here. I don't want, like, I just want to eat the thing. I don't want, you don't have to make it all special. Oh, right. don't shoot stuff don't like into my mouth, in man. <laughs> don't shoot stuff into my mouth. <laughs> That's, right. That's all I'm trying to say. Joe, the Christmas edition, I was getting out of context clips left and right from this last <laughs> two minutes of conversation. I would yes. expect nothing else from Joe. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. <laughs> so what is tip number three then? Let's go to this, tip number three. This is going to sound obvious, okay? but watch Christmas adjacent movies and TV. I have a few that I go to. So okay. like around Halloween time, I'll watch the movie Krampus, which is a Christmas movie, but it's like scary spooky. And so okay. it is like a really good like segue movie. Like when I'm still like enjoying Halloween, I'll put on Krampus and it'll be like, hey, it's almost Christmas. And so it works. Um, the Holiday is a nice one. Like it's this, it's this movie with a lot of snow and like feels, but it's not like overtly christmas and so it just gives you a little a little christmas something gremlins is a classic you know you got uh there was a a, a show on disney plus a couple years ago it's like this hawkeye series hawkeye the the marvel character but it takes place at christmas time and oh, it has like okay. really great christmas vibes to it so like stuff like that that you can put on throughout the year and it's not overtly a christmas movie or a christmas tv show but it has those it takes place at christmas time or it has some sort of christmas flair to it i'll watch throughout the year to kind of be like hey i'm not watching a christmas movie right. i'm right, not right. Like, i'm i'm not breaking here. any rules here this right. is all legal Mm -hmm. I'm just, uh, it gives me a little Christmas. a little Christmas. I see the theme here. You're doing like Christmas, Christmas samplers throughout yes. the year. Yes. Right. Okay. Like yes. a tasting menu. Yeah. Yes. Okay. A little things. I like that. That's a good way to approach it. Right. You want it, but don't go full in. That would be weird. It's May, but have right. a little bit of it. Okay. Right. Like I don't like, you know, you can't watch, you can't watch Home Alone in, in June. You know, you have to, right. I mean, you can, and I don't uh, judge anybody that does. But I like there's some movies that I just want around the holiday season, but I still want some Christmas cheer throughout the year. So there are some movies and I'm sure I've missed many. Those are just a few that came to mind as I was okay. making the list. That's a that's a good idea. The sampler. Right. Because yeah. I, I pounded a bottle of glue wine first thing this morning and I was <laughs> yeah. just like trying to get in the spirit. And that wasn't a good idea. No, it's too early. It was it's a little early. early. Yes. Yeah, it was. Yeah. We're recording early, but. Yes. Uh, we'll talk about that off air. We'll get you the help you. you need. <laughs> thank you. Yes. So we'll support have... group. So oh, thank you. you that. Yes. I appreciate that. So, okay. So we have, that was tip number three. So we're learning a little bit of a sampler. We're getting some movie ideas, the holiday gremlins, Krampus. So what do we have? How many total tips do you have too, Brand? One, two, One, three, two. four, five, six, six. I have six. six. Right. Just a sampler too. Not too yes. much. No, too much. no. I love it. Six. We'll, st well, I'm sorry. Four. This is number four. This is number four. Uh, we'll yeah. stay a kind of in the uh, the 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 same realm almost. But if you, I love Christmas music. It's a huge part of the holiday season for me. Uh, I personally don't have any problem, unlike watching Home Alone in June. I don't have any problem listening to Christmas music all year round. Okay, it is. Uh, uh, you know, I typically try to see like how long I can make it before I put on a Christmas playlist, and it's right. usually like March or something like that. But if you are somebody who says, I you can't do Bing Crosby when it's warm outside, um, there are lots of really great instrumental 
Christmas albums and playlists out there that I think are good for just having on in the background. And it's almost like subliminally, subliminally putting you in the Christmas spirits because it's like, I, I, I hear the Christmas, but it's not like the classic Christmas music that you listen to during the holiday season. So there's uh, like an I heart uh, instrumental Christmas station. So you can just put that on and let it go. Um, I, I've gotten really into, there's a, a lo-fi Christmas playlist on Spotify that I really like. Cause it's just like super chill good like I, I i get really good work done when i listen to lo-fi music and like having like little christmas ambiance around that works really well for me and so finding playlists or online uh, stations that you can listen to that have a ton of like instrumental elements to it i think is a really good way to stay in the christmas spirit without stealing f- what you do during the holiday season itself Right, right. That's true. Because if you listen too much during the regular seat to during the off season, when it comes around, you're going, and I've heard white Christmas a thousand times just since May, it, it loses, right. I guess, some of its effect. Okay, so that's a good idea. A little yeah. lo fi. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. play in the background. and it's, uh, it's going. But you're still getting the feel. Now, Brian, I think subconsciously, a lot of this is protecting you and the people who try this from getting those Christmas blues, because you know, okay, it's not going to be cold turkey and just completely done. I have this lo fi. I have this these other things at my disposal if I just want to taste. So it's not completely gone. That's right. Year. That's I like right. that. That's okay. Right. That's what we've got to do. Yeah. Okay. I like that. These tips are fantastic. I'm going to be implementing most of those today. Absolutely. A lot of them. I think we skipped this, uh, all the holiday, the family festivities, Seth. We go right into all the brand's tips. This <laughs> you can do this. See how everything yeah. works out. I'll let <laughs> you talk to my <laughs> wife. See how she thinks. She I'm thinks sure she'll be fine. I'm sure she'll, she'll be, be fine. Totally fine yeah. Well, we'll tell a brand said so. If That's right. Know, yeah. That's the pass right this there. We, um, we have a doctor's note. This next one is maybe not for everybody. Um, and if you are, uh, you know, married, you might have to get your significant other on board with this. Luckily, I have. Okay. I keep a three foot Christmas tree up all year. Yes. In the corner of my room. Your bedroom? And, you mean? Yes, your bedroom? my bedroom. Yes. yes. <laughs> and uh, it just stays up and it has like a few ornaments on it, has the lights. And whenever I need a little Christmas boost, I go and turn it on oh, and so it's, it's, it's small enough to where, you know, and it's out of the, like people aren't walking into your house being like this freaking guy, like what's up with like, right, still get your right. Christmas tree up. Mm. It's in my, it's in, uh, you could put it in your office. I, I know that Scott from Christmas morning has some Christmas decorations that he keeps up in his little area, whatever, if, whether it's your room, your office, uh, just a, a space that is your own and you, you just keep it in there. Maybe you turn it on every night. Maybe you just turn it on like myself. We need a little Christmas joy. Um, I, I, I feel like it's out of the way enough and small enough to where it's not weird, but right. it also is enough to get you like, yes, Christmas. So I'm that's good. year round. That's the only thing. In other words, if we were to visit your estate, the villa that deck the Hallmark built, and we would see no other Christmas decorations except that one tree in the corner. In my house, yes. We still we do keep the the office decorated all year. We have a Christmas right. tree in the studio and stuff like that because you never know. But right. in my house, yes, I we keep a Christmas tree up all year. Now, does your are there some nights where your tree is on? And does your wife come in and go, Brand, is everything okay? You see the tree? No, is on. no, it's not a she, sign. Okay. she loves it. No, it's not a sign that I'm sad. It's just a <laughs> sign that like this would uh, really enhance uh, my day by just putting on this Christmas tree. Um, and luckily she is on board and loves it. So, okay. so there you go. Good. Okay. That makes me feel better because yeah. I pictured like the cat got run over. Brand's got the tree on, yeah. you know, that the, the uh, our taxes Somebody went did. up. Brand's got the tree on our property taxes are through the roof or whatever. Yes. So, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For got sure. It. All right. It's not a sign for help. It's, it's there. I like that. <laughs> that is good. I did have a little tree oh, to my left. You can't see it here. That I had, and I was like, "Oh, you know, I'll have that for after the season, just on my desk." And uh, I one day it was gone, and I have not seen it or, or even asked. So I don't know where. It is. I I think a lot of people when they're taking their Christmas decorations down for the year, they don't even think about it being a possibility. And I just say, why not? Why right. not keep one little thing out that you can look to throughout the year and just be like, "Yeah, man, Christmas is awesome, ain't it?" One thing. Yeah. One thing. Right. Yeah. Okay. 
Just you talk to my wife later, cousin Leslie. Right, and you see what you can do. I'm scared. She wants it away. It's going away. Not so. my house. Right. We'll play her this segment. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let me. I'll. Yeah. Why? I'll raise you this. Why not? Give me if you can give me a reason why not. It's just a little. It's just a little guy. Just, just little, a little, right? Guy. What? I'm right. not asking it, to keep the full boy up. Just a little right. guy. I think the trick is put the full boy out and then she'll be happy when we settle on the little guy. <laughs> That's right. That's if right. she gets home today and there's a nine foot tree out, she'll be very happy for the what two foot doing? tree. Set it up. We got time. She mm-hmm. she's back. That's compromise. That's marriage. Oh yeah, exactly. When I want to, to get my first car, my parents are like, what kind of car do you want? And I go, well, I want a Mercedes. So we settled on a Volkswagen <laughs> somewhere in between because otherwise right. I would have gotten the Yugo. I know it. You have to anchor your negotiations high. Yeah, yeah, That's exactly. You're just, you're just playing the game. That's all. Exactly. Okay, I'm going to do that. Let's get the tree after this. Uh, so we are on tip number five, I believe, right? Uh, oh, that was uh, that was five. No, we're on number six. Oh, we yeah. are on the last. I have one more. I have one more. But I like I like that last tip. That's uh, that has inspired me to uh, take out. I got a little, probably a foot and a half porcelain one. Yes, the plug it in. Yeah, I think it was great. But it was part of that kind of the doldrums of putting everything away and kind of after the season was over and I put it, it, away, is, like, it especially helps when, when you're putting stuff away to know that there is the one thing that you're going to leave out. So it kind yeah, of yeah. makes it a little bit easier uh, to, you're right. to and it's the not big and out. intrusive or anything. So yeah. it's, that's right. <laughs> okay. I like, right. So knowing one thing stays, then it's not completely like it's here and then it's gone. Yeah. Like and if, if anybody it. questions you on it, just be like, at least it's not hard drugs. Like right, right, right. I could be, I could be doing something way worse. Well, right. that's an I'm actual not. conversation I have to have. So, yeah. right. <laughs> so you're suggesting Seth stops that and gets a tree. I like that. I guess. I would I say that. just try it. I'm not okay. going to, I'm not saying that is the answer for every hard drug, yeah. but right, right. most, I think. But if Seth, if I find Seth nodding out in a corner holding a porcelain tree brand, I'm going to call you. I'm going to be a little disappointed. <laughs> right. I so. understand. I yeah. I have not seen that happen, but I, it right. is a concern, I think. It's, okay. about- it's all part of the weaning off process. So. <laughs> it would be great for the pod. It really would. <laughs> Ratings through the roof. We'll there's your, there's your social media post for the for this episode. It's just <laughs> right. That's right. 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 Seth and his crippling <laughs> drug addiction, but he's yeah. got his uh, tree. That's right. <laughs> so we are on six, number six, yes. the ultimate tip ladies and gentlemen have you been enjoying these tips so far look at this a nice polite golf clap uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have brand here this is there we go there we go that's all we're asking for that's right that was beautiful and i love they all stopped clapping at once they're yeah. So, yeah they're very amazing. like oh, yes <laughs> yeah. done i'm like leonard you, bernstein here you got okay. someone you got a conductor back there <laughs> that's right so um, tip number six brand this is going Fast at we've been on wow 47 minutes. I feel like you just got on time plot. Yeah. I would say it's not the ultimate. Uh, maybe I should have done them in order of, of, of most important to least important, but it is nice. And I actually, it's it's been happening this entire time, whether or not you know it or Ooh. not. This behind me is a TV, and I went on YouTube and I typed in Christmas scene. And um, I think everybody is familiar, obviously, with the Yule Log. You put on uh, the video of the fireplace going, and it's nice. But what I've noticed the past uh, couple years, at least, on YouTube, is there's been an influx of just Christmas vibe videos that are like 10 hours long. And it's just like, this is just like a nice uh, coffee shop scene that is like animated, I think. But it's just nice. And uh, uh, whenever I'm I'm in the mood, I come into my office. I have this TV behind me, um, and I just put on a Christmas vibes video, and it just kind of transports you into, a, in this case, a coffee shop at Christmas time, and it just it g- makes gives you a little a little Christmas a little Christmas feel. And so there's all sorts of these videos on YouTube. There's so many of them, and so just find one that kind of fits what vibe you're looking for that day there's also fall ones um that i'll put on occasionally if i just kind of want a a nice fall tree or something like that so lots of put on philo.com slash dth if you want some vibes as well that's exactly right if you want some if you want some deck the homework vibes um but yeah this is a free and easy way to just give it like almost transport you to a a christmas scene just for a little bit while you're maybe doing some work or whatever 
I didn't even realize that was a TV behind you. I just thought it was like a picture or something. I couldn't yeah. see. So yeah, you can't okay. really see the movement, but there is some movement. I think it's snowing in the in the windows. And I, I like do put those on, but I have not thought to do it in May. So that's why this is such a public service. This episode, absolutely. I think we may have to do that. Yeah. Right. Again, I just say why not? Why not? Right. <laughs> I think that's going to have to be the slogan. We're going to put it right here. Why not, Seth? Mm-hmm. Think slower. Why not? Two <laughs> two stickers we'll have on our computer. I don't think I can think any slower. <laughs> Something like <laughs> that. Snail's pace. Yeah. So we have the six tips. This has been fascinating, Brand, uh, because you've done it. You've done the work. You've tried this out, and you've been able to kind of overcome those off-season Christmas blues. Keep just enough going that it doesn't spoil the season, but it doesn't make you bummed fully when it's over too. And that's what we're all trying for here, just to make a little magic every day. Yeah. That's yeah. right. And obviously, if you're listening to this show, you already, you know, uh, subscribe to a Christmas podcast. But a bonus one would be there's lots of them out there. Christmas morning as well. Yes. Uh, Christmas past. So many. And uh, you guys are great about bringing on different podcasts that are in the Christmas realm and and saying, hey, go check them out. Uh, yeah. But subscribe to them and give them a listen. And th- it never fails to put me in a little bit of a Christmas spirit to listen to a Christmas related podcast. So there's lots of them out there. Uh, many of them like, like ours are going all year. So there you go. Yeah, that's right. And then it is, you know, when they, you see there's like-minded people out there, when you're not alone, things feel more surmountable as well. So that's, yeah. a, that's great. That's yes. yeah, a bonus seventh tip. Brandy's I know, but, that, but that's been the best part of doing this, doing these shows is, realizing that you're not the only weirdo out there. Like for right. a long time, I was like, man, like I have a problem. I just listened to Frank Sinatra. It is hot outside. Uh, I need some help. And then I just, I've discovered that there's lots of other people uh, like me. And that's, I don't know if that is a good thing or not. Like maybe I do actually have a problem and this is only feeding that problem. Yeah. Um, but I think I'm okay with that. Yeah. Brian, I have. I know we're keeping you a while. I do have one more question. Is that that brought up a great a question? So you grew up in Florida. It's very okay. hot. Did that make yeah. you almost part of your your Christmas love because you were romanticizing colder weather? Because I lived in yeah. Florida for a few years as well, and I got to the point where I just wanted to go to the mountains and get a cool breeze and start romanticizing that. Did you find that's the case, or maybe that's why it's so imbued in you? Yeah, one hundred percent. So I was born in Florida, Orlando. And for a few years, I think when I was uh, four, five, and six, we lived in Maine, oh. <laughs> polar opposite, because uh, that's where my parents, uh, my parents' parents, also known as my grandparents, is one way to say it. <laughs> that's where they lived, and so they wanted to be closer to them and all that good stuff. So um, we lived up there, and I think it was the combination of experiencing that and then for the rest of my childhood not having that anymore and like being able to experience the magic of a of of a white christmas there's something when you can't have it that makes like longing for it even more magical and so but really it's just like the the overall aesthetic of christmas it's just there's something about it that you can't you can't beat whether you're whether it's 100 degrees outside or or negative 10 you can get yourself in the Christmas spirits around the holiday season just because of it's just the Christmas vibes. There's it's it's yeah. compete with you can and you're living proof and it just makes it the day a little bit better. So yeah. and you've discovered it this year. So right. Well that was I, I looked at it as a happy accident or a byproduct of all this was um like the community at large and how many people there are and stuff and all the people we've talked to and met like yourself and, and it's just like you, you were not let's say by yourself or isolated just to, you know, a lot of other people doing it out there and stuff. And it's uh, so, yeah, it kind of carry over throughout the year and stuff, but it is a wonderful, weird little family for sure. Yeah. It's a good way to describe it. Wonderful and weird for sure. And, and Bran, we really appreciate you joining us today. This has been fun and I opening, I've got a million more questions, but you do have a life to get to. (laughs) So at another time, I will, unless you block me on Instagram or emails, I will uh, reach out and we'll uh, get those other questions answered. Yeah. Yeah. I'll go ahead and unblock you. Uh, I I blocked ahead of time. I anticipated this going worse than it did. So I'll unblock you. This is wonderful. uh, I can't wait to come back. And honestly, I I would do this every week if you would have me. So uh, really any excuse to talk about Christmas I'm I'm in for, but especially when it's with uh, wonderful people. This is, this is so much fun. We appreciate that. Thank you so much. And everybody, of course, you know, check out Brand. 
Deck the Hallmark. Check them out on Christmas morning and also philo.com slash DTH and everything else they have going on. Books, he's the king of all media nowadays, yeah. the Christmas king of all media. <laughs> so it's amazing. Brand, thank you so much. And we look forward to speaking with you again and best of luck with continued success. And everybody reach out to us at Christmas Cousins Pod or Christmas Cousins Pod at gmail.com. I'm Cousin Chad. And I'm Cousin Seth. Thank you, Brand. Bye, Cousin. Bye.